I'm holding a pint glass which has a tiny amount of orange cordial at the bottom. That orange cordial represents evidence. And for me, this is a tiny amount of evidence in a whole pint where if I have a full pint, I have a justified belief. Right. So let's say this is the resurrection of Jesus. I look at this and say, right, the evidence for the resurrection of Jesus is very, very, very small, very low value indeed. So if I was to believe the claim that Jesus was resurrected, I would need to fill up my pint glass with a lot more stuff. And that would require me to fill it up with faith, uh, motivated reasoning, biases, uh, stuff like, you know, heaven and hell really driving me to want to believe this is true. And the other thing I can do is artificially expand my, my va evaluation of the evidence so that this tiny sliver of orange cordial takes up three quarters of the glass. And my point would be that JM would look at the Gospels. We have the same access to the same evidence and same arguments, but I look at the Gospels and that's how I value it. He looks at the Gospels and he will evaluate the evidence as being three quarters of the glass. So the question is, really today, what we need to be talking about is, what are we bringing to the table that means that our evaluations of both the claim, like what is an ordinary claim for me is not an ordinary claim for JM. So I might say naturalistic abiogenesis, so the life starting naturalistically is a normal claim for me. So I won't need as much evidence as he will need. He, he will see naturalistic abiogenesis as an out of the ordinary claim. There, and he will need evidence that is far beyond what I would require. And same for the resurrection. So what are we bringing to the table? And how can we meet in such a way that we start understanding each other and start having maybe a benchmark for, for how we arrive at our, our worldviews and our background knowledge. What do you make of this particular analogy John, Jonathan Pierce has of the, the pint glass? And essentially, his view is that there's, you know, you're all looking at the same evidence for something like the resurrection. And in his view, it's a very small amount of evidence at the bottom of the glass. And that all kinds of other factors, psychological factors, um, you know, your commitment to Christianity, whatever it might be, sort of effectively fill up the rest of the glass to, to make it sort of possible for you or to believe. Expand the, what, the, or response? expand the evidence itself. Yeah, or both. Right. Or indeed expand the evidence. Right, for sure. I think Jonathan and I have different priors for something like the resurrection. And we can discuss, I think, a bit later how we assess the priors, because I think that we assess the priors in different ways. But I think that we would agree in principle, that the amount of evidence you'll need will be inversely correlated with the prior. So if you have a very small prior, you're going to need more evidence to justify a conclusion. And uh, I don't see beliefs as binary, right? Either you believe it or you don't, but more as a confidence level, right? You, you, we have different confidence levels, and you might justify confidence in a belief at, say, 90% versus 95% and so forth. And that will that, that can be um, quantified or, or assessed, determined by a, a Bayesian calculus. For more conversations between Christians and skeptics, subscribe to the Unbelievable podcast. And for more updates and bonus content, sign up to the Unbelievable newsletter.